What's up everybody? Today we're going to talk about Nutrition 101. So let's jump right into it. So when you're starting out with weight loss, we've all heard it's calories in, calories out, tracking calories. Uh, there's great apps that you can use to track all your calories and some of you may even be familiar with macros which we are big believers in macros. I think it's once you know macros it's a foundation allows for all three of the macronutrients you can customize those to any which way you please um, whether you're wanting to increase in bulk or whether you're ready to reduce weight or if you're just kind of wanting to reshape so let's jump into it and begin so step one you need to determine your current calorie cycle which your calories run off a 24-hour cycle so you may have heard of your resting metabolic rate uh, we like the TDE formula, which is your total daily energy expenditure. And basically what that means is what your body uses on a 24 hour cycle, what it needs for calories. That's eating, sleeping, any exercise you get, brushing your teeth, walking to the car, sitting at your office, or if you have a high physical activity job, whatever it is, it's all going to be equated and determine what your current calorie cycle is. You can find this information online or you can purchase it through our nutrition book. We've laid it all out in very simple, easy to formulate material. So once you've determined your current calorie cycle, step two is we need to reduce, increase, or reshape. So most of us fall into the weight loss. We want to lose weight. So as you can see here, I have a 20% in quotation marks because 20% reduction is usually the best way to go. Same if you're increasing. You could go 15%, you could even do 30 to 35%. It's drastic, not really recommended. That's a lot of calories that you're gonna cut out of your current cycle. So, for a quick example, if we were at 2,000 calories at our current cycle and we wanted to reduce we would take that 20% from 2,000, that's 400 calories, and our new calorie cycle would be 1,600 calories. So, pretty simple stuff. So, now we get into the nuts and bolts of calories and macros and how they work with one another. So, once you've determined your current calorie cycle, you need to convert this into macros. What are macros? Well, macros are your macronutrients. There's three macronutrients. There's protein, fat, good fat, and carbs. Uh, all three have a calorie per gram ratio, which I have shown over here. So protein has four calories per gram. Fat has nine calories per gram. It's the highest in calories per gram ratio. And carbs also have four calories per gram, just like protein. So how does all this work? Well. Protein is always going to be your most important macro. Uh, protein works hand in hand with your lean body mass. What is lean body mass? Well, lean body mass is if you had 0% body fat, what would you weigh? For me, I'm currently at 175, but if I was 0% body fat, I would probably be about 155 to 150 pounds of lean body mass. So, you want to consume 0.7 to 1 pounds of your lean body mass. Does that make sense? If I'm 155 pounds of lean body mass, that's telling me that I need to consume 155 grams of protein a day. So let's jump over to here. We're going to use Joe as an example. Joe's current calorie cycle is 2,600 calories a day. Joe wants to lose weight. So we're going to reduce that number by 20%, which is 520 calories. And this is going to make Joe's new calorie cycle 2,080. Right under below, I have 150 pounds of lean body mass. Now there's ways you can formulate this to just keep things moving along. I'm not going to formulate it right now because it's just going to be a distraction. If you have questions, you can go ahead and feel free to email us and we'll gladly show you how to figure this out. So, Joe's new current calorie cycle is 2,080 calories. He has 150 pounds of lean body mass. So, we're gonna convert that into macros. So, Joe wants to be one pound of his lean body mass for protein, which is going to be 
150 grams of protein. So we know that protein is four calories per gram. So we take 150 grams of protein, we times that by four, that's going to give us 600 calories. Now we move on to fat, the good fat. For men, it's typically about 30%. With women, it's 40%. You can fluctuate a little bit, uh, but to keep things moving along, I kept Joe's at 30%. So we're gonna take 30% of 2,080 calories, and that's going to equate 416 calories. We also know that fat has nine calories per gram, so if you take 416 calories, we're gonna divide that by nine, we're gonna work a little backwards, that's going to total 46 grams of fat. So, these are your important macros. Protein's number one, fat comes in second. And the reason for that is because we know that Joe's new calorie cycle is 2,080 calories. 1,016 of that has went to protein and fat. And with carbs, anything that is remaining is going to go to your carbs. Your good carbs, your complex carbs, brown rice, quinoa, uh, wheat, sweet potatoes, things of that nature. So, protein fat, that leaves us with 1,064 calories remaining. We know that there's four calories in a gram of a carbohydrate. So we take 1,064, we divide that by four, that comes out to 266 grams of carbs. And there we have it. We have just figured out what Joe's macros are. It's 150 grams of protein, 46 grams of fat, and 266 grams of carbs. Calorie per gram ratio for all three equates to 2,080 calories. So, where does the customization come in? With protein, you pretty much want to keep it 0.7 to 1 pound. Let's say Joe wants to go low carb. Joe doesn't want 266 grams of carbs. He's, he wants to be less than 100 grams of carbs. Well, we have a couple options here. You can increase your protein to about 1.2 to 1.3. That's going to make this number be higher. That's going to shoot the 600 calories number up. You could take your fat from 30%. You could, you could bump it up to 40%. Because Remember guys, fat doesn't make you fat. That's the big myth that we've heard for many, many years and all this fat-free stuff, it's carbs. Carbs are the, are the number one devil. And that's why there's so many diets, the paleo, the keto, low carb, no carb diet, the Atkins diet, because carbs make you retain water weight. Okay, so increasing your protein, lean body mass ratio, increasing this would bump these numbers up and it would lower this, and so maybe Joe wouldn't be at 266 grams, Joe would jump down to maybe 150 grams of carbs, right? Joe, maybe Joe doesn't even want to be 150 grams. You can always increase this number. I mean, you could get carried away. I wouldn't do more than two pounds of lean body mass. That's, yeah, that's like bodybuilder type stuff right there. But what Joe could do is make sure that he hits 150 grams, make sure that he hits 46 grams, He's going to get some of this, he's going to get calories from some of his carbs. And as long as Joe doesn't go over that number, Joe's going to see weight loss. And with the right workout program, he's going to be building muscle, he's going to be toning, and he's going to be losing weight in an, in an effective way that's not going to put him on a miserable diet, it's not going to make him rebound, where you hear people when they go no carb and all of a sudden they come back that they lose water weight. This is the slow and steady race that always wins. And what we love about it is it's always changeable. You can always customize your macros. And this is what allows for flexible dieting. You, you may have heard that term flexible dieting, but this gives you the flexibility to have the good food that we know and love to eat, where you're not killing yourself, you're not eating rabbit food, you're not eating just kale, end on end, you're allowed to enjoy the cheat meals, the pizza and stuff, because look how many grams of carbs you, you can have. That's a couple slices of pizza, gang. That's a beer or two. Maybe that's a couple glasses of wine over at dinner. That allows for flexible dieting. And when you're hitting your macros, you're gonna see the results. What Joe doesn't wanna do, 
is Joe doesn't ever want to go over his number because if we have a reserve every day, let's say Joe's at 20, hitting 2,300 calories every day, Joe's not going to see any results. He might see a little, but as long as you have a reserve and you have a deficit left over every day, you're going to keep on that weight. And remember, calories work on a 24 hour cycle. So if you binge one day and you blow it out of the water and do 3000 calories on your diet that day and the next day you tell yourself, well, I'm only gonna do a thousand calories and I'm gonna drink water and starve myself. It doesn't work like that. Damage is already done. You've already done the damage to your body. You might as well just pony up and get back on the train. Okay? So, hope you learned some information. Hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to email us if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.